All right, guys, in this video, we are going to be looking at competitive, non-competitive, and uncompetitive inhibition, as well as how do the graphs, the line weaver berg plots, and the michaelis menten plots evolve in response to the presence of inhibitors. And so if we go back to what we're studying here, we know that we're going to have an enzyme's active site, which we'll just call E, and a substrate will come along, and it will go into this active site, and it will be stabilized into the enzyme substrate complex, at which point it will be able to actually perform that reaction because we'll have lowered the energy, uh, the activation energy for that reaction, and we'll form product P, and then we'll free up that enzyme active site so it can go on and continue to react more of our substrate. And so what happens when I throw an inhibitor in here is that it can jump in at various points during this process and that will affect the rate at which we can do our reaction as well as the relative affinity that our enzyme will have, the enzyme's active site will have for the actual substrate. And so in competitive inhibition, what happens is that we'll take an inhibitor and this inhibitor will have affinity for the enzyme active site. And so I like to think of these enzyme active sites as like parking spots. And so what will happen is that there's a finite number of parking spots. The competitive inhibitors will grab the open parking spots before the actual substrate can. And if the substrate can't get into a parking spot, then it can't get stabilized, so you can't actually react. And so basically the lower availability of parking spots for substrates means that there's a lower affinity, relative affinity or effective affinity for this thing to happen, uh, for the reactions to proceed. And so basically this is how things look during the competitive inhibition is we get this type of thing here. And so what's the effect of this? So if we're changing the effective affinity for an enzyme's active site to substrate because we have something else competing with that substrate, that is going to affect KM. And if we remember our intuitive definition of KM, KM I think of as inverse substrate affinity. And so having that inhibitor is basically going to increase the uh, KM because it's decreasing the actual affinity that that enzyme would have, and so that's what we get. So when I add in uh, I, this thing increases that KM, that monode constant. And so now if we look at the case of non-competitive inhibition, what's going to happen here is that uh, the actual inhibitor will not care for the active site anymore, but what it will care about is still on that enzyme. It cares about something called an allosteric site, so some other site, meaning allo. And what happens when you have the non-competitive inhibitor is that the uh, inhibitor will also bind to this enzyme. And when you have your inhibitor bound, it changes the active site so that it no longer can work. So basically, we do the same thing as decreasing the relative availability of enzymes available. Uh, and so what this means is that we're no longer able to have as fast of a reaction as we previously could. And so with the non-competitive inhibitors, what ends up happening here is that we have a lower Vmax because we have just fewer parking spaces in general that are even present. Uh, and so this ends up leading to a lower Vmax, but it does not change the affinity that we would have because the substrate still wants the active site as much as it ever did. It just, there's fewer parking spots available. So the key thing to take home with the non-competitive inhibition is that because there's just fewer enzyme active sites available, it's like we had fewer enzymes and it will reduce the most, uh, the, the maximum rate that we could observe. And so in the final one here, we have with uncompetitive inhibition, and I will note that uncompetitive inhibition is fairly rare, but we do see it, and that's the reason why we learn about it, is the following. So with uncompetitive inhibition, it doesn't care about allosteric sites, it doesn't care about active sites, it only cares about the enzyme substrate complex. And so what's going to happen here with our inhibitor 
is, I'll just write it like that, your inhibitor will bind to the enzyme substrate complex and form this third or additional uh, element in your reaction where you're basically doing the same thing as reducing your maximum reaction rate because you've basically lowered the effective amount of enzyme that's even present. And in addition to that, you have this interesting effect of reducing the KM, which in the intuitive sense means that we're actually increasing the affinity of the uh, substrate for our enzyme active sites, and that's what we get. And so basically knowing this background now, when we look at the line weaver Burke plots, this is what we see in the following. So key thing to make note of on these line weaver Burke plots is that the y-intercept here is equivalent to the following. So we've got one over V max. And so with our competitive inhibition, we know that we did not change V max because even though we have a competitor present, if we flooded our solution with our substrates, we could basically negate the effects of having that inhibitor present at all. So like a DDoS attack in computer uh, and on websites, you can have a similar thing happen here where if you just flood this thing with more substrates, you can overpower the diminishing effects of the substrate uh, um, of the inhibitor. And so this first graph corresponds to competitive inhibition. This second plot here is what happens when, so if we look at our new y-intercepts, we're going to note how our y-intercept is now higher. And because this is an inverse, this means that we've got a lower Vmax. And then the other thing we're going to see here is that we have a more negative, more negative, uh, x-intercept and we know that the x-intercept corresponds to km and so because our x-intercept is equivalent to minus 1 over km uh, this means that we are going to uh, I'm sorry this is actually yes so because the km was reduced and it's in the denominator that's gonna have the effect of making it a bigger number and this is going to be a bigger negative number so in this case this second plot here is caused by uncompetitive inhibition because we're seeing the two effects happening of both the new Vmax the lower one and also the uh, uh, smaller KM and then this final plot here by process of elimination we're also able to see that uh, with this plot the actual KM, the affinity, has not changed, but we do have a different Vmax because we have a different y-intercept, so we have a smaller uh, Vmax, and a smaller Vmax means that we're going to have a larger y-intercept, as we can see here, and so this one follows the non-competitive inhibition graph and how you would expect a line weaver Burke plot to change in response to this inhibitor. So I'm going to wrap things up with that. Hope this video helps, and thank you all for watching.